Hey creative people, you're watching Shiny Films, and welcome back to another headfilm tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create these Trap Nation inspired audio visualizer effects in headfilm. Before we begin this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel Shiny Films if you haven't already, and to follow me on Twitter at shiny underscore films. Today's video tutorial will be rated 3 stars out of 5, and should be pretty accessible for anyone who's had uh, a basic experience with headfilm. And before we begin today's tutorial, I just want to mention that today I will be using the pro version of HitFilm, but you can also use the express version with an add-on. I'll show you which add-on right now. If you click on the link in the description, you'll get a discount. Uh, well, not when you click the link, but if you click the link on the description, then it'll take you to the store page. And at the store page, you can buy HitFilm Pro, any of the FX Home products. And if you go to add-ons uh, and you scroll down for the HitFilm Express add-ons all the way to the general add-ons over here, if you just buy the motion audio visual pack, then you'll get access to these two effects, which are really important. And they're the ones we're going to be using in today's tutorial. It costs 25 bucks, but if you click on the link in the description and you use the code SHINY10, which should be popping up on the screen right now, then you will get a discount of 10% when you buy and you'll help support the channel as well as the makers of the software. But even if you don't have this effect and you're just using the express version of HitFilm, there are still HitFilm tips and tricks along the way for you to learn. So keep watching and uh, let's jump into HitFilm. So here we are in HitFilm and just before we begin, I just want to preface this by saying I apologize for some of the audio quality because of course with the song, instead of recording the desktop audio like you normally would, I'm putting it through my speakers, through my mic because well, it's a bit easier for me to edit, but it should be okay for you to follow along with the tutorial anyway. So first things first, you need to get your song into HitFilm. Mine is called Surface and it's by Locksbeats and I'll leave a link in the description to where you can listen to that on YouTube as well. Just right click on it in the media panel and hit make composite shot. And because it's an audio file, you need to make sure that you remember that uh, you set the right template for your uh, video, uh, which will be the same one as your project if you haven't set up a project yet. Uh, but you can name it whatever you want and it'll have the automatic duration of the song in there for us and just hit OK. So now we've got one comp with our song already loaded in as I'll play back for you right now. Might be a bit quiet, a bit loud, I'm not sure. It was a bit loud last time I recorded it, so I just want to make it a bit quieter. Hopefully you should be able to hear it that. Um, and I'm just going to go uh, and we're going to start off by creating our audio visualizer. So let's create a new layer, a new plane layer, and let's name this the left because it'll be on our left. So then just hit OK. It doesn't really matter what color the plane is. Just go into the effects panel and just search up for the uh, audio uh, spectrum effect. We can also use the audio waveform effect and I'll just show you what the waveform is. Audio waveform is what you normally see when you look at audio files visually. If I just go and right click on my uh, audio file here and I go options show waveform, you'll see it's basically a graph of loudness or of you know, amplitude over time. And so you can see over here it starts to get louder and you know it's completely quiet here. And at this intro bit, it's a bit quieter than it normally would be. And that's uh, just, you know, loudness over time. But audio spectrum is a graph of loudness over pitch. And it chooses a specific point or a specific range of time for that to happen. So I'll just show you, rather than uh, blibber blabbering along here, I'll just show you by just dragging the spectrum effect onto my plane layer. It goes transparent, as you can see, but not a problem. Just go into the audio spectrum into the audio input and select the audio layer to be our song like so. And it should fill in pretty nicely. And I'll show you what I mean here. We've got the bass on the left, the low frequencies on the left, and we've got the treble or the high frequencies on the right. And we can see the time that it's taking is 100 milliseconds. So it's currently displaying, displaying 100 milliseconds uh, worth of the audio in its pitch and its loudness. And so that's basically what the audio spectrum is. Um, and then we can go ahead and adjust the settings. I'm just going to play it for you to show you what it looks like first. And you'll notice that the bass starts coming on as the beat goes on like that. So you can see that, uh, you know, when, when the bass comes on, we get, you know, a spike in the bass. And generally with electronic songs like this, you won't get too much treble and you can counter for that and do all kinds of things with your spectrum uh, to change that. But anyway, let's just go and uh, look at some of these settings. Channel is basically left, right, or average. Average you probably should use most of the time. Start frequency is the lowest frequency on the left here, and the end frequency is the highest frequency on the right. Um, you can probably just leave it at the default for the meantime. 
Uh, but if you want to, say, uh, accentuate the bass, you can just get rid of the treble, really, <laughs> if your song uh, caters to that kind of thing, and you can just uh, do that. But otherwise, you can keep it like the default. Duration, you should probably just not mess with, and the offset, you shouldn't mess with, really, either. Just keep it on zero to make sure it's in time with the beat. And then audio start and audio end is where we're going to be positioning our audio layer uh, so that we can use it properly. So uh, I'm just going to start by positioning it on the X axis at 960. And that's for the start of the audio for the bass. And that's so that it's going to be right on the left of the screen. I'm just going to make it minus 540 as well. So it's at the bottom left corner. And then the audio end, I'm just going to set to XB0. So it's right in the middle and then same minus 540. So it's at the bottom. Now we've just got it at the bottom covering half the screen like so. The next setting is colors and you can mess around with the colors if you want, but it's a little bit finicky and I won't go into it in today's tutorial. I know Trap Nation uses a whole bunch of different colors and everything, and you won't exactly be able to create the exact Trap Nation logo and everything uh, in HitFilm with this effect, but you'll be able to create something pretty close or something that still looks good. So I won't mess around with the colors today, but if you just want to change the color of one thing, you can change the color, uh, say, of by default it's white, but you can also change the color and increase the number of colors if you want, all that kind of stuff, but I won't go into that today. You can set the height to be whatever you want, 600, whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it at the default. And the thickness is, if we have a bar graph here, you can see that the thickness is the thickness of each uh, line. But we're going to change the render mode to fill today so that we can actually just fill everything in. And so here, the thickness basically, uh, you should probably just set to 0 0.01 to make sure it's a nice sharp line. Now the Trap Nation audio visualizer I know kind of smooths it out, but there's no real way you can smooth it out with this effect. So the best thing to do is just keep it nice and sharp like so. Um, and you know, you can deal with all that other stuff later. In terms of amplitude transform, you can probably just leave that uh, the same and blend mode you can leave it as none to get rid of that plain background. So what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly duplicate it so that we have a left and a right. And um, you can average them out or you can change the channels. I'm just gonna keep them both on average. But the reason we're doing this is because we have our circle shape and we want to kind of basically duplicate it. So just uh, select your plane layer and hit Control D. Or you can go right click uh, duplicate, but uh, Control D will work too. And then you can go ahead and rename your layer to be, I'm gonna name it to be right because it's the right one. And the shortcut, the shortcut for that one is F2, or you can of course go right click rename. And then in this right plane, just go into the transform. And then under the scale, you want to unlink the X and the Y. That way we can stretch and warp it and adjust the values independently of one another. Just click on the X and just go to the left and set it to be minus 100. And that way it'll basically flip it on the X axis for us. And it'll make sure that it's now on the right. And if we just, we can relink those back just for, safe, just for safety. And then if we play it back, we can see we've got Bass on the left here, we've got bass on the right here, and we've got treble in the middle, just like so. And this will be really useful for when we're doing our polar warp. You'll notice if we zoom in there, though we have like a little bit of a gap here, which is less than pleasant. So the way to be gonna fix that is just go into the effect and just go into the audio end and just increase the X by one. It's a bit trippy because this is the flipped one, but just do the same for the left. Audio end, just increase by one and you should fill that gap right there. All right, so now we've got our audio visualizer all fixed up. It's time to add our circle in the middle, which will be our logo. So just create a new plane layer. I'm just gonna rename this to be circle and just hit okay. And then just grab the sphere effect in the effects panel and just drag it onto your layer. And this way we have a perfect sphere rather than drawing some kind of spherical mask. We've got a perfect sphere in the perfect center of uh, the comp, which is what matters. And then you can just go ahead and raise the radius if you want, something like 300, which will be a little bit nicer for us right there. The next step is to grab your logo. I've just got the Trap Nation logo pulled from Google Images. And although I just said, make a perfect sphere with your circle, that's all right, because we can just, for the logo, we're gonna put it inset anyway. So I'm just gonna create an ellipse mask. I'm just gonna go right to the corner there. And then I'm just gonna hit, oh, right there. And then I'm just gonna drag and you can hold shift if you want to create a perfect circle and then just let go and you've got our circular Trap Nation logo. And I'm just going to scale this down and I'm actually just gonna make it inset a little bit in the other circle that we've got going there. All right, so that's all sorted. We've got our logo and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to 
uh, parent this this Trap Nation logo to the circle, so that now when we, whenever we just move the circle around or scale it, it'll move the Trap Nation logo with it as well, as though they were, there, as though they were one logo, which is what we're trying to make. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make this audio visualizer around the circle. There's one super simple effect which you should all know about in HitFilm, which we're going to use to do this, and it's called the Polar Warp Effect. So create a new gray layer and just drag it above both your audio visualizers but below your logo. And then just grab your Polar Warp and drag it onto your new gray layer. You can see that at the moment if we just hide these layers, it's not really working properly. It all is crammed in the middle. But that is an easy fix because we can just go into the Polar Warp and just set the start radius to be 300. And that is now in a circle shape. And we've got our bass down here and we've got our treble up here. Now, one thing I just want to mention before you all go crazy is don't try to avoid using these viewer controls because they, they are easy to use. Um, but with certain effects where they just add it in the new update, they are a bit glitchy and sometimes they can crash. Uh, they've crashed me a couple of times anyway once during this recording as well. So <laughs> I wouldn't do that if I were you, but just keep that in mind. I'm just going to save my document real, real quick and uh, let's move on to moving it in the right place and some final touches. I'm just going to go ahead and select the circle plane now and I might just scale it a little bit down to something like 99% so that we properly reveal our polar warp because the way the two work, the polar warp is going to be a little bit smaller than our circle so that's fine, just scale it down to 99% or so. And then in our audio waveform you can see we've got a bit of an issue here with the bass, the similar thing we have with the treble but it's a little bit different here because we've got also not just a tiny little gap here which we had in the treble, but we've also got a big gap here where we've got these two huge spikes here um, and it looks a bit awkward. So we're going to change that real quick um, just by going into the gray layer with our polar warp effect and we're just going to increase the range by about three degrees or so, maybe one more, no I think that's fine. So 183 degrees probably is pretty good. And what that's, what that's doing is basically getting rid of the gap and it's going to cut off the lower frequencies as well until we have a really nice sharp bass spike, really. And there you go, you've got a much nicer visualizer. You can also increase the end radius, I forgot to tell you about that, if you want to make it larger like so. And uh, there you go, that's basically the basics of creating a Trap Nation audio visualizer. Next week I think I'll probably be making a tutorial on how to animate this kind of logo and have uh, elements in your video react to text, uh, not to text, to music well, um, which could be done in the HitFilm Express version as well. Next week will probably be an Express tutorial. Anyway, that will be doing it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then of course, be sure to leave a like on the video to let other, others know you liked it and to help others find it as well. You can subscribe to my channel, Shiny Films, if you want more HitFilm tutorials like this one. And you can follow me on Twitter at shiny underscore films. Also, make sure to use the affiliate link in the description below because that will not only help support the channel, but it'll also help support HitFilm, who are, of course, really great uh, with this software and everything. And I've also got affiliate links for all kinds of other visual effects uh, sites that you can find in the description below, which I've worked with and made tutorials of in the past. So go ahead and check those out. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay shiny.